Have you ever wondered why some people stay in abusive relationships? Does this question seem logical to you? Well, we need to unpack this a bit. There's a common misconception that survivors of abuse have a choice, a simple option to walk away. But this question, this misguided question, why don't you leave, is more harmful than you might think. It places blame, not on the actions of the abuser, but on the survivors themselves. It suggests that they are somehow complicit in their own trauma, as if they willingly choose to endure the abuse. This couldn't be further from the truth. Survivors often feel trapped, powerless, without the necessary support or resources to escape their situation. So, when you ask, why don't you leave? Remember, it's not only dismissive, but it also completely overlooks the power dynamics at play. So, what is the reality of these power dynamics in abusive relationships? Well, power dynamics can be thought of as the ways in which individuals influence each other. In abusive relationships, this influence is often wielded harmfully. Abusers may use a variety of tactics to maintain control over their victims, including threats, manipulation, and violence. Threats can be explicit or implicit, often creating a constant sense of fear and uncertainty. Manipulation, on the other hand, can be more subtle, warping the survivor's sense of reality and self-worth. Then there's violence. This can be physical, but it can also be emotional, psychological, or financial. All types of violence serve to instill fear and establish control. These tactics, combined, can create a sense of entrapment. Victims may feel like they have no options, no way out. This isn't a simple choice to stay, it's a complex web of control and coercion. It's crucial to understand these power dynamics to truly grasp the challenges faced by survivors. But there is another layer to this problem, one that's often overlooked, the potential for re-traumatization. When we ask the question, why don't you leave? We unknowingly risk triggering painful memories for the survivor. The inquiry, though seemingly simple, can act as a catalyst, thrusting them back into the throes of their trauma. Not only does this question disregard their emotional struggle, but it can also engender feelings of unsafety. It's a stark reminder of the horrors they've faced, reopening wounds that are in the process of healing. It's like picking at a scab, causing fresh pain, and delaying the natural healing process. The survivor's journey to recovery is a delicate one. Each step forward, no matter how small, is a triumph. Let's not complicate this process with intrusive questions that may set them back. It's not just about understanding why survivors stay, it's about respecting their experiences and their healing journey. Now that we understand the complexities of this issue, how can we offer meaningful support to survivors? Firstly, listen without judgment. This is key. Let the survivor know that you believe their story, you're there for them, and their feelings are valid. There's no need to offer advice or solutions unless they're specifically asked for. Just being there, offering a sympathetic ear, can mean the world. Secondly, offer practical help. This could be anything from helping them find resources like a safe house or legal aid, to just being there to provide childcare or transportation. Remember, every situation is unique, so the help you offer should be tailored to the survivor's specific needs and circumstances. Thirdly, respect their boundaries. It's vital not to pressure them to leave the relationship or to talk about the abuse if they're not ready. Healing is a process and it takes time. Respect their pace and give them the space they need to make their own decisions. Lastly, let them know they're not alone. Feeling isolated is common among survivors, so reminding them that they have a supportive network can be incredibly empowering. Encourage them, reassure them, but above all, let them know they're seen, heard, and valued. Remember, your support can make a significant difference in a survivor's journey towards healing. Your presence, understanding, and patience can be the beacon of hope in their darkest times. So. What have we learned today? We've learned that asking a survivor, why don't you leave, can be harmful. It shifts the blame, overlooks the power dynamics in abusive relationships, and risks re-traumatizing the survivor. Instead of posing this question, we should focus on providing non-judgmental listening, practical help, and respecting their boundaries. 
Next time you find yourself wondering why a survivor doesn't leave, remember the complexities we've discussed today. And instead of asking that question, ask yourself, how can I offer support?